What is going on guys, it's Muddy Dwarf here, welcome back to another PS5 video. So what if I told you there's a new way of implementing the exploit that would allow you to both use the Blu-ray disc implementation and the WebKit implementation at the same time, while being completely offline and all without having to burn the exploits to a Blu-ray disc. Now this method is by developer Euro Alley, and it works by adding a BDJ menu to the Blu-ray apps files on the hard drive, which can then be opened when you run any Blu-ray disc on your PS5. So you can use any movie or TV show that you have on Blu-ray to load the exploit. You can of course also burn a blank project to a Blu-ray disc if you don't have any Blu-ray movies laying around, but you do have a Blu-ray writer, that is also an option. Okay, so what we need to do first of all is we do need to at least run the exploit once using one of the conventional methods so that we can copy the files to the hard drive with FTP so I'm just going to use the you know web browser that I've set up here on the home page. If you don't know how to get this up and running, check my full setup guide, which I'll leave down in the video description. We're going to go ahead and run es7im1.site, which of course is Echo Stretch's 7-in-1 host. And we'll go ahead and run one of the exploits here, one of the uh, Spectre's exploits. So I'll just use the Spectre one here to get the uh, exploit up and running. Okay, there we go. So once the exploit is up and running, we're going to switch over to our computer here. I'm going to run netcat GUI and copy our FTP payload in there. Enter the IP address of our PS5 and the port number as 9020, uh, which of course I'll leave this stuff linked in the video description. We're going to inject the payload so that we can get FTP up and running on our PS5 and then we should be good. So in order to do this, you can see there's quite a few things here. So we have BDJ+. Plus. Uh, by Euro Alley. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up and I guess I'll just copy this into a folder called uh, BDJ Plus. So we'll go ahead and copy the modules and the BDJ stack file into this folder. And then from there, if we open this up, you'll see there's a few interesting things in here. So inside modules, we've got a jar folder and a www folder. So in the jar folder, you can add other you know bdj projects that you can load with this menu on the ps5 so right now it's got some stuff from blue play on it you know you can check out blue play it's basically you know it's basically like a homebrew little, little homebrew games and homebrew game ports that you can run with a blu-ray disc on most modern consoles that support bdj without any kind of exploit so you can add that to the menu as well so you know there's a few ones that have already been added in this particular version uh, like Doom, for example. There's also like a little uh, NES emulator. Uh, also this Bluebird game that has been added here. But we can also add the BDJ tools from John Tornblum, uh, which will allow us to load all of John Tornblum's stuff, like his exploits and his Lua loader and his jar loader and all of that stuff. We can also add in here. So I'm going to go ahead and add BDJ tools. Basically, if you want to add any additional projects that you can load in this menu, you just need to copy the jar file and generate the bdjo file and copy them in a folder in this jar folder here and you'll be able to load it you know it's probably best in fact if we just put bluebird in its own folder as well let's go ahead and do that uh, bluebird we'll just copy this into a folder now this is still early stages we don't really have at the time of me recording this there's no official release so i don't know you know what will be included in the the version that actually gets publicly released um, or if I'm the one that's supposed to be publicly releasing this, I don't really know at this point. But um, either way, this is basically what you can do if you want to add any additional projects. You just add them in here into the jar folder, create a folder with the name of the project, and then copy the jar file and the BDJO file in there, and you should be good to load it. Then you also have the www directory, which of course means it's running a web server as well which means you can load anything on here it doesn't necessarily have to be an exploit it could be something else but generally you could put an exploit in here there's already one that's pre-built in here but let's say i want to use specter's exploit instead i can just delete the files that are in here download specter's exploit from his github repository and then from there i can just copy if i go into document en ps5 we've got the actual exploit host itself here and I can just go ahead and copy that into the www directory. Of course, if I wanted to host Slayer's Govies one, then I could copy his exploit host in here to load his version. So yeah, you can basically copy any exploit host you want in here. And then when you load the Blu-ray disc and you activate the menu, this will be running on the PS5. So it basically creates a local web server running on the PS5 that will host 
whatever you have in the www directory uh, which is pretty cool here you can see there's the you know there's the web server jar here as well the pd plus loader the kernel and all of that so we are basically good to go so all we need to do is copy this over to a particular spot on the hard drive here for the ps5 so i'm going to use filezilla of course uh, my ftp client you can use uh, of course the windows file explorer to access ftp or you can use winscp or filezilla whatever you want what we're going to do is put in the ps5's ip address here into the host box uh, so 137.219 and then we're going to put in 1337 as the port number quick connect to connect us up to our uh, ps5's hard drive so from here we're going to go ahead and navigate to uh, system ex directory and then we're going to go into the app directory and then we're going to go to npxs uh, 40140 so 40140 and then this is where your blu-ray files are located your bdj files are all located in here and we particularly we want to go into the cdc folder and this is where we're going to add our files and override stuff so we can't write anything into this directory because it is uh, write protected initially so we need to enter a custom command here with this particular version of ftp that will I'll give us write access to this directory so what we need to do with filezilla I'm not sure the exact way that you do this on WinSCP, but with FileZilla, you just click up here uh, in the kind of log at, at the top. You right click and you enter a custom command. And then from here, you can type in MTRW and then click OK. And if it says Command OK, then it has enabled write access to this location. So from here, we can now copy our folders in here. So if we go into BDJ Plus, then what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to copy in our modules folder into this location. So we'll get that copied over. And then we also want to copy the bdjstack.jar file. And we'll copy that one in there as well. And overwrite what's currently in there. And that's basically it. You now have everything copied over and ready to go. So you can use any Blu-ray to trigger the menu. Any Blu-ray movie or TV show. It's kind of recommended to burn a blank project to a Blu-ray disc and use that. Because that way your Blu-ray drive isn't going to be working as hard every time you launch the menu. And therefore you're not going to cause as much wear and tear on the disc drive over time. Um, but you can just use any Blu-ray movie or TV show if you want to. If you don't have a Blu-ray writer. If you do have a Blu-ray writer, you can just write a blank project to a Blu-ray disc. So as an example, I took the Hello World project, the sample from John Tornblum's BDJ SDK, which just prints out a Hello World notification on screen. That's all it does. And then if you go into the disc directory, the BDMV, you can go to the jar folder and delete the jar file that's inside. And then if you build the ISO with the BDJ SDK, it will basically do nothing but print the Hello World on not even as a notification anymore because you deleted that jar file it will just you know just show the um hello world on a black screen basically so it doesn't really do anything it's basically a blank project so i'll leave it down in the video description you can write this to a blu-ray disc you know if i copy this out to my desktop here i could just write this to a blu-ray disc with image burn you just put in a blu-ray disc you go to write image file to disc drag in your hello world iso and then write it to, with your blu-ray writer and once you've done that, you'll be able to insert that disc and use that to trigger the menu. But if you don't have a Blu-ray writer, you can use, as I said, any Blu-ray TV show or movie. So I'll show you that as an example here. So obviously we're running the exploit since we loaded FTP. So I'm going to restart my PS5 to no longer be running any kind of exploit anymore. Okay, so as you can see here, we've restarted. We're not running the jailbreak anymore. We do not have access to the debug settings. I've put in a Blu-ray movie. So Avatar Extended Collector's Edition. So we're going to go ahead and try and load the BDJ menu from this disc. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And we'll know if it's working if we get the notifications that should pop up. Just give it a few seconds to regain signal. HDCP and all that. And there we go. You can see it is running. We've got our message. Three BDJ Plus modules loaded, created by Euro Alley. And uh, so by default, the menu does not just pop up immediately because obviously if you just want to watch a, the Blu-ray disc, you don't want to not be able to watch your Blu-rays. So it will not trigger automatically. You have to trigger it with a button combination. The button combination right now is left, left, square, right, right. And if I press those buttons, we get the menu popping up right there. Now, you don't want to wait too long to activate this because I've noticed that if you let the 
Blu-ray go all the way to the point where it gets to the interactive menu, uh, like the scene selection menu and play disc and all of that stuff, then the button combination doesn't seem to work. Again, stuff like that may be fixed or maybe that's just how it is, but you've got plenty of time before you get to that point to activate the menu. So as you can see, we have it up and running right here. So we can run any of these like games, for instance, I could run bluebird.jar and there we go. You can see it's running. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why. Um, well, I failed straight away at the first one. Um, I'm not entirely sure why uh, it's like cut off. It could be to do with my capture card or a, re or a resolution issue because it's running at 4K. Maybe it's set for 1080p or something. Um, but yeah, clearly there's a bit of an issue there with these games with the resolution, but that can probably be fixed. So I'm not sure if it's a capture card issue or a resolution issue. It looks like it's probably a resolution issue. But uh, yeah, anyway, normally that would be full screen. But so you can get little games like that running. And if we go ahead and exit out of the the app and then run it again. So obviously homebrew games is fun and all that. But obviously we want to run the, the actual exploit using this as well. So we'll reopen the disk here. And get this up and running again. So this time I'll just wait for the the text to appear on screen and then we'll do left left square right right again the button combination might change at some point to open the menu but uh, anyway from here we can go to either the bdj tools which will run john tornblum's uh, exploit implementation or we also have the web server that's running on here as well uh, running on the actual ps5 itself that's hosting specter's exploit that was the exploit that i copied on there so if i go ahead and run a notification that I've set up here to load the IP address of my PS5 uh, with the port 1111, which is what it's running on. If I go to that location, you can see it will actually start loading Spectre's exploit. And this is completely offline because it's running directly on the PS5 itself. The web server is actually running on the PS5 and hosting its own uh, exploit here. So, of course, we can run Spectre's exploit from here on the PS5 itself with this or we can use the BDJ tools that I added here for John Tornblum's implementation to run the kind of Blu-ray drive, uh, the BD jailbreak version. So we can go into tools.jar. We've got launch elf loader on port 9020. So if I wanted to inject a payload, then I could activate that one and send a payload on 9020. It's also got John Tornblum's jar loader running as well. So I could send a jar file over on port 9025. I can send a Lua script over on port 99. 38 as well and then we also have of course enable debug slash dev mode uh, which is of course the debug settings plus the target id change to dev uh, a dev kit so that you're able to install ps5 packages and ps4 fake packages and then of course we also have the jailbreak bdj player uh, which will just run i think the normal bdj uh, exploit so for example we'll go ahead and tell it to enable debug settings and dev mode and that will go ahead and enable it right there so with that, we should be able to exit out here, go back to the home page. And then if I go over to settings, you can see the debug settings have been successfully enabled. So there we go. We have debug settings running here, package installer. It's all up and running. So another thing I'm curious about actually is can we launch the web server that's running on the PS5 when we load the disk? But does this actually still run when we're not like when we're on the home page so that we don't have to actually use a notification to actually take us to the local IP of our PS5 to load the site that's running on the web server. Could we do it from, could we do it by heading back to the home menu? But I feel like this probably suspends the web server when we head back here, but we'll see anyway. So let's try and go to, well, let's just try and access it now from here. Is it still running? No, it's no longer running. Okay, so you have to be running the disk in order to be able to access that, which means in order to be able to actually load that particular exploit from the disk, the web, the website version that's been hosted on uh, the PS5 itself, you need to set up a custom notification in order to be able to load it because that's really the only way of actually launching a web page while you're on an app like the disk player. Uh, when you're actually launched into the disc player, you need to use a notification to be able to launch the web page, which will then allow you to uh, access the site that's running on the web server. I do have a tutorial that shows you guys how to 
edit the database file, the notifications database to add uh, custom websites that you can launch with a notification like this. So I'll leave that linked down in the video description if you want to set that up. But obviously you don't have to necessarily load the exploit through the WebKit with this method. You can, of course, just add the BDJ tools and just use John Tornblum's Blu-ray drive version to launch the exploit instead from here, which will also be completely offline. Although it is advised if you're going to be doing this long term to probably have like a blank project like that Hello World project that you write to a disk and use that instead. I'll give you a little example of, uh, of it working with that as well with that blank disk. So we'll go ahead and eject disk and we'll pop in our Hello World sample that has the actual exploit part removed, the notification part removed. So it's basically just a blank project that we can use to trigger the exploit. So if we go ahead and launch this, you can see it just comes up with Hello World and that's all that's on here. So we can just do again, left, left, square, right, right on the D-pad and then bam, we get access to the menu. In fact, this is probably better because it's larger, it's easier to see. It was kind of a, a lot smaller on the, on the previous one, but as you can see, we can get things up and running there as well. Let's try Doom. Shall we try Doom here? Doom, uh, I guess we load the jar file. Uh, X single player, go for single player doom. Again, this is probably going to be cut off again on this left hand side of the screen. Yep. Well, anyway, you can see part of doom running here uh, with blue play. But uh, yeah, anyway, you can see you get the idea. Obviously, there may be a few kinks to work out here, maybe a resolution problem. I should have probably loaded this with probably loaded this with the avatar one and then it would have probably been full resolution. But you get the idea. So yeah, it's pretty handy. Again, the benefits are offline use. Obviously, you do need some kind of exploit to load initially to set this up so you can copy the files to the hard drive of your PS5. But once you have that set up, this is handy for offline use. You can run the web, the WebKit version offline. You can run the Blu-ray drive version of the exploit completely offline with this as well. And then also you have, you know, a menu so you can load multiple things with it. You can load your Blue Play games, your little homebrew games that can run with um, BDJ blu-ray java you can go ahead and run that as well run those games you can also run the exploits as well as the web kit version so all of that can be done offline and you don't have to actually burn your own blu-ray disc to do this you can use an existing blu-ray movie or tv show that you already have access to so yeah nice little technique there by euro alley there's been a bunch of people involved here i'm not entirely sure everybody who's involved so i don't want to like you know not credit people properly but euro alley apparently is the main developer behind this I know T-Rex777 um, has been kind of doing stuff with this as well and adding his own stuff to it and kind of uh, expanding it a bit. You know, maybe he'll release his version at some point as well. And then, uh, yeah, you also have, you know, obviously John Tornblum, who's BDJ Jailbreak we were running with this, as well as Spectre's Exploit that we were running with this. But you could also run Slayer's Govies one as well instead. So yeah, pretty awesome stuff. So hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.